Good afternoon. I'm Bruce Wingus. I'm a past president of the Akron Press Club and uh, editor of the Beacon Journal, and I want to welcome you to today's uh, State of the School speech by David Jaynes. First, let me share some Press Club information with you. Um, on March 3rd, next Tuesday, journalist uh, David A. Graham will speak to the Press Club. Uh, Summit County Executive Russ Pry will give his State of the County speech at the John S. Knight Center, which is also sponsored by the Press Club, on Thursday, March 12th. And journalist um, and author Hedrick Smith will speak at the Press Club back here at Quaker Station on April 7th. Details of these events and membership information for the Press Club can be found on our website, akronpressclub.org. I also should probably mention that upcoming is um, Mayor Don Pasquale's State of the City speech. Um, and that will be um, Friday, March 20th. Um, that event looks like it's co-sponsored by about everybody in town. Uh, the Greater Akron Chamber, the Press Club, Kiwanis Club, Rose Club, Akron, uh, and the Akron Roundtable. Um, thanks for coming out today. Your support of these lunches allows the Press Club to fund scholarships for young journalists and communications professionals, and we thank you for that. Please silence your cell phones or anything else that may go beep during the speech. And that is as a tradition of the Press Club, at the end of, of David's speech, we will um, take questions from the audience. Uh, there's some pieces of paper on your, on your table that you can um, fill out your questions, and someone will be around to pick those up. Um, David James joined the Akron School District in 1992. He became Executive Director for Business Affairs in 2002 and was named Superintendent in August 2008. As Superintendent, uh, David is responsible for about 21,000 students, 3,000 employees, and more than 50 school buildings. Akron Public Schools began the 2014-15 school year uh, with the opening of the King Community Learning Center which is part of the $800 million project to open schools to their surrounding communities. Um, also last fall, the Akron schools were in the headlines when Resnick Elementary was closed because of the Ebola scare. Uh, the school system now offers dual enrollment program with Stark State College and the University of Akron Innovation Generation Scholarship Program. ACT testing for kids begins in the junior year in the Akron Public Schools so they can take the test twice. David graduated from John Adams High School in Cleveland, received his bachelor's and master's degree from Cleveland State University. He and his wife live in Akron with their two children, one of whom is a student in Akron Public Schools and the other is a graduate of the Akron Public Schools. Please welcome Akron School Superintendent David James to the Akron Press Club. Well, he took half of the information from my speech, so this will go a lot faster than even I thought. <laughs> so good afternoon, and um, thank you for attending our 2015 Akron Public Schools State of the Schools Address. I want to again thank the Press Club for sponsoring this event, as well as the University of Akron for hosting us here at Quaker Station. Uh, first, a, a bit of personal business. Today is my dad's 90th birthday, so. Um, <laughs> I know he'll be listening later on, so I can't really mess this up. Um, I'd like to acknowledge our school board members here who are here with us today. Lisa Mansfield, our board president. Bruce Alexander, our board vice president. Patrick Bravo, Dave Lombardi, Veronica Sims. Reverend Dr. Curtis T. Walker and Tim Miller, uh, would you please give them a hand? And I know we have a form, one, at least one former school board member here, and that's Ginger Baylor, who works for Congresswoman Marsha Fudge. Okay, thank you. If there are any other former school board members, please stand. Thank you, and to all our elected officials, there we go, thank you. Um, uh, for our elected officials, if you're present here with us, I see Marco Somerville uh, here, please stand. I see a couple of our city council persons, please stand and be recognized, and any of our judges or what have you, other elected officials. <laughs> And I'm going to get in trouble if I don't recognize at least one person. That's Marilyn Clackler, my uh, secretary, administrative assistant, and <laughs> and to all of you, our honored guests, welcome. 
Um, I would also like to advise you of the handout that's at your table. Uh, please look at that at your leisure and take it with you. We've basically designed it as a fold out so you can hang it on your uh, bulletin board or what have you. It's a handy reference of uh, a lot of the information regarding your Akron Public Schools. So again, this is my seventh year as superintendent of Akron Public Schools. And over the last 12 months, we've went from the polar vortex again to the Ebola virus to blizzard bags. <laughs> this year, we are moving away from the Ohio graduation tests to end of course exams and school schedules that were calculated on days that are now going to be calculated in hours. Last year I stated my frustration with having to learn one set of rules one day only to come back the next day to face another set of rules. And not a whole lot have changed has changed since then since now we hear the number of state mandated tests our students are going to take will most likely be reduced. And we are also studying another new education funding formula from Governor Kasich. Now as a leader of your public schools, I have to remain calm in the midst of these various storms that come our way. Because if I panic, all of my people are going to panic but really talk about a hamster wheel. These constant changes in rules that govern us, they're really stressing out our teachers, our students. They're stressing out everyone, including me. Last year, I spoke about our three district focus areas, core academics in the classroom, our college and career readiness supports, and really building sustainable partnerships with people and organizations throughout our community to support student success. All of our strategies are built around helping our students become well-rounded and academically prepared. But it is more important than ever now to promote a college-going and workforce-ready culture among our students. This is why we are in full support of Summit Education Initiative and the Cradle to Career Alliance. And I'd like to call out uh, Darren Weimer, who I see here along with Matt Devers, uh, for their work in identifying those critical transition points along the educational continuum. SCI is helping us analyze our progress to help prepare each of our children for success. So today, I want to talk about where I believe we need to go in preparing our students for the future. But first, I want to provide an update on this past year, beginning with a key transition point, and that is early learning. The Akron Public Schools Early Learning Program serves children from ages three to five. With 10 locations throughout the city of Akron, this program is designed to meet the educational needs of typically developing children, as well as those children who have special needs. We provide additional services such as speech, language, physical, and occupational therapies according to the needs of each individual student. Since last year, we have added 249 additional students to our early learning program. And in the fall, we reopened the old Essex School as an early learning program site with 60 seats available with room to expand. In a robust early learning system, um, it sets the foundation for future success. And I would like to thank Pat Cronin, uh, who leads our early learning program, for her hard work and dedication. Another critical point along our educational continuum is third grade reading. Last year, we started with 916 students identified as at risk for being retained because they did not meet the state's requirements for the third grade reading guarantee. And after much work by our dedicated teachers and principals, we reduced this number to only nine students being retained. And according, thank you. And according to the Ohio Department of Education, Akron had the highest percentages of among the big eight urban districts of third grade students who met the requirements for promotion to fourth grade at 
So a big thank you goes out to Mary Outley Kelly, our executive director of elementary schools, and Dr. Tuan Dang Nguyen, our English and language arts specialist. It's uh, their hard work that really helped us uh, meet our uh, third grade reading guarantee efforts. I think they deserve a round of applause. Now, um, you know, Mary and Dr. Wynn, this is your time in the limelight. So it, not, moving forward, anyone, I, if I miss your name, you should just stand up and just take the credit. <laughs> to further improve reading skills among our elementary learners, we also launched a new K through five literacy curriculum. Uh, teams of teachers worked last year to review curriculum options aligned with Ohio's new learning standards and selected a highly effective literacy curriculum that is delivered in a blended learning format offering both printed and digital text. This new curricular option increased the amount of time allocated to literacy instruction from 120 minutes to 180 minutes per day for our students in grades K through 3. We also retooled our approach to improving instruction. Teacher leadership teams now come together throughout the year to intensively review student performance data. The results of these reviews are then used to develop 90-day strategic improvement plans that are much more precise than the year-long plans of the past. Our teachers then analyze student performance and use this data to adjust instruction. Now, we've developed these practices in conjunction with our work with the University of Virginia Turnaround Program, targeting 11 Akron Public Schools that are part of our, what we call our impact network of schools. And this turnaround effort focuses on how to take our data-driven instruction and action planning. And we've expanded these strategies beyond just those 11 impact network schools and have started to apply them to all of our schools across the cities. Our teachers have really become masterful at collaboration, analyzing student performance data, and determining how to differentiate instruction to make sure all students are succeeding. And this really is the main foundation of our whole teaching and learning approach. At the middle and high school level, we are really focusing on increasing the rigor and relevance of our curriculum so our students can graduate college and career ready. In my previous updates, I have stressed the importance of preparing our young people for the future, a future that includes work. And from my conversation with many of the business leaders in this community, some who are in this room today, there is a valid concern for the workforce needs of our local and regional economy. And one area that stands out is the critical need for talent in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM. Our partnership with the City of Akron, the University of Akron, the Greater Akron Chamber, and Akron Tomorrow and Invent Now has resulted in two high-performing STEM schools in our community, the National Inventors Hall of Fame STEM Middle School and STEM High School. Now the challenge with our STEM platform schools is how do we take what we're doing there and expand it to other APS schools? And I'm sure that many uh, of our organizations, you realize that if there's some important initiative uh, effort, initiative or effort that's going to be accomplished, that's going on, you really have to have someone own it. And so to expand these innovative learning practices and programs across the district to make sure they're maintaining the correct course, the board and I appointed Tracy Buckner, the former principal of the National Inventors Hall of Fame Middle School, as director of innovative programs. And believe me when I say she's under a whole lot of pressure for it. So Tracy, I'd like you to stand up and be recognized. <laughs> In addition, the board and I approved a proposal developed by teachers at Case Elementary and Litchfield Middle Schools to implement the International Baccalaureate Program in those schools and trying to expand IB throughout the Firestone Cluster. 
at Finley Community Learning Center and North High School, we have started digital literacy and integrated technology courses. At Portage Path, we continue to work on implementing a STEM program that uh, you know, we gave the opportunity for the staff, the teachers, and principal there to develop. And at Bucktill CLC, uh, they continue to work uh, on their new tech network expansion on this one-to-one -one technology adoption into teaching and learning. And we have also expanded options for problem-based learning activities across all of our elementary schools. So if you ask a third grader about Chick Quest, be ready to hear about the time, temperature, and conditions required for the successful hatching of a chicken. <laughs> I've actually had one of those chicks uh, urinate on me when I was at the bill. <laughs> or you can ask them about uh, germination and be ready to hear about uh, VeggieU, uh, 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 the VeggieU project and the importance of sustainable gardens. Or ask fifth grade students how adding mass on their rockets can increase the distance they travel. Our sixth graders, uh, why is dirt a dirty word? Or ask a physics student to tell you about building bridges, dropping eggs, floating canoes, and just be ready to hear about displacement, mass, tension, force, and motion. Our students are doing some amazing things because of our amazing teachers. And speaking of amazing, 450 students competed in the Akron Science Fair this year, and 60 of them went forward to compete in the Regional Science Fair. <laughs> and of the 60 at Regional, 10 students moved forward to compete at the state level Science Fair in Columbus. And just off the presses, we received a $7,500 grant from the Akron Community Foundation for our collaboration with Great Lakes Biomimicry and our STEM program to develop a workshop around the development of 21st century skills using biomimicry principles. Now, for those of you who don't know, biomimicry is the application of examples or mechanisms or processes from nature to solve real world problems. For example, understanding how the evolution of a gecko's foot may help us better develop adhesive materials. Our Akron Public School students are working on problems like this each and every day in our district. Again, because of some fabulous teachers. Now these activities are just related to STEM, but in the visual and performing arts, I recently attended our Akron Public Schools Bands in the Round concert at East Community Learning Centers and our students performed superbly. And overall, this was a very year for the arts in our schools. The artwork of three Firestone High School students was honored at the Congressional Art Show Award Ceremony. Junior Mengu Yu, sophomore Natalie Stegman Gall, and sophomore Louisa McCoy were all honored. At Krauss, our uh, dancing classrooms team won first place again in the Northeast Ohio Regional Competition. The Firestone High School Band swept the Ohio Music Association Band Awards in November. And our own Tommy Bruno of WAPS 91.3, The Summit, won an impact award from the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundation for his efforts to provide donated musical instruments to students in the greater Akron and Canton area. And in addition, The Summit debuted the Kajam radio station at Akron Children's Hospital. Again, I think these folks deserve a round of applause. <laughs> In addition to the arts, a major highlight for us will occur on April 1st when our fifth grade students will participate in a concert featuring our students playing the recorder alongside the Akron Symphony Orchestra. This is a result of a grant from Carnegie Hall, helping our kids have an appreciation for music. And on a personal note, my own daughter, who plays cello in the National Inventors Hall of Fame STEM High School Orchestra, will be going to Disney World with her classmates, members of the STEM High School musical group, under the direction of Jennifer Lewis. They are putting on three performances, and I wish them luck. And actually, I'm a little jealous because I'm not going. I want to get out of the cold. <laughs> And in the area of career readiness, our 30 plus career technical programs are preparing students for their future careers. 
Several years ago, I spoke about uh, bringing a program by the Ford Motor Company Foundation here to Akron that focuses on career academies. Uh, Ford Next Generation Learning, or Ford GL, is a national network of schools with the goal of infusing high uh, expectations and academic rigor in our college and college prep with the real world and relevance uh, of uh, our career and technical programs. So in cities like Nashville, they've adopted this program and it serves as a national model of bringing together our educators, employers, and community leaders to implement this Ford NGL model of transforming schools. In fact, our own business advisory council uh, chaired by Lou Serraldo. Lou, that's a hint for you to stand up and be recognized. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Uh, Lou has been advocating for this type of career engagement along with the other members of our Business Advisory Council for quite some time. Our BAC group, as we call it, is made up of representatives of local business and they've been working with our schools in supporting our uh, career programs for quite some time. Uh, today I would like to announce that our friends at the GAR Foundation has awarded the Akron Public Schools a grant in the amount of $350,000 to begin the process of developing this program. And I would like to uh, develop that program along the lines of a health career academy uh, in Akron Public Schools. And I'd just like to thank um, uh, Kirsten Toth and Christine Mayer uh, in the distribution committee at GAR for granting these funds. Thank you. Now my overall goal with the board's approval is to build upon our current uh, Project Lead the Way Bioscience program at North High School and I believe, let's see, uh, Michelle Johnson uh, teaches that program. I think this will provide us the opportunity to consolidate our health related career programs and develop partnerships with local and regional healthcare providers and post-secondary providers like Stark State, and I see Para Jones here, um, you know, to fill critical needs in our uh, healthcare workforce. So again, to Christy Mayer and Kirsten Toth, I thank uh, GAR Foundation for your support on this and many other initiatives in Akron Public Schools. Another critical piece uh, of our career and academic program is post-secondary preparation. You know, in promoting college and career readiness, Akron Public Schools already provides uh, juniors the opportunity to take the ACT test. We have also incorporated options for dual enrollment in all of our high schools, whether it's the University of Akron, Stark State, Lorraine Community College, or Kent State University, all of our students have options to take college level courses. And I want to tell you that in the last semester, our students earned 499 college credits. And by spring semester, our students are on track to earn an additional 633 college credits. Thank you. My goal here is to have the majority of Akron Public School students complete at least one year of college level coursework while still in high school. I think that will set them up for success further on. In addition, last year I reported that the, our Akron Early College High School was recognized as a National Blue Ribbon School. This partnership with the University of Akron allows first generation college students to earn their high school diploma and associate's degree simultaneously. In fact, this school is again one of the top 15 schools in the state of Ohio in terms of performance. And this past year, the Akron Early College was recognized as a bronze award winner as a top school in America by U.S. News and World Report. Now I know you all are thinking, you know, and yes, we have been quite busy this past year, but wait, there's a little bit more. <laughs> uh, last year, um, I introduced our new Akron Public Schools website, and I really stress the importance of expanding our digital infrastructure. And we really have, with the board support, made solid investments in technology to support our expansion of digital courses and digital curricula. New math and literacy curricula adopted a few years ago have huge uh, digital delivery systems. 
We have developed a student portal that can be accessed 24-7. It contains a wide array of subject area applications to expand student skills, reinforce their deficits, and enrich their strengths. This portal includes the student's ability to use Google Apps for Education, including the cloud-based Google Docs so they can collaborate on uh, various documents and share those documents with their teachers. We also use this portal to create and implement our online uh, Blizzard lessons. Uh, last year when we faced all these calamity days, similar to what's going on this year, um, we turned to an online delivery system to support learning despite missing uh, many days of face-to-face -face, uh, instruction. And digital learning may also present us with the opportunity to re-engage with former students who find our method of education or that method of education preferable to our in-person delivery system. And as we work to regain our market share and make our services more relevant in the digital era, I have appointed Marcy Ebright as our digital learning specialist. So Marcy, stand up. I know you're out there. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm just giving you a little warning. One of your first tasks is to find me a turnkey solution partner to offer digital learning options to compete with other online education providers who have currently stolen some of my students because I want them back. <laughs> And for our current Akron Public School students, we do look forward to bringing more blended learning options and incorporate technology tools to truly differentiate our instruction. We are also using technology to improve our library and media service offerings to students, and Dave Jennings will appreciate this. This year, we successfully launched round-the-clock access to our APS libraries through eBooks, digital databases, and InfoHio resources. Our partnership with Subco Books and the LeBron James Family Foundation is providing our students with 24-7 online access to a library of nearly 3,400 supplemental books that can be accessed both at school and at home. And according to a recent article in the School Library Journal, this may be one of the largest e-book collections in the United States. So thanks to our friends at the LeBron James Family Foundation for making that possible and SEPCO. Now the most important aspect of teaching and learning in the Akron Public Schools is of course our highly trained, dedicated, and caring teachers. And looking at where we have been this past year, it's obvious to me that more often than not we work in collaboration. Under the previous leadership of Union President, former Union President Bill Siegfurth and Jeff Motes, we were an exemplar of collaboration by the Ohio Department of Education in our Race of the Top grant. In fact, out of our Race of the Top grant, we created many of the collaborative teams that are still at work today. Teams that include teachers and administrators. Teams that have jointly set testing schedules. Procedures for implementing our teacher evaluation process. We even have collaborative teams in place that are not even required by our labor agreement. Now I do understand that teachers are frustrated because of the myriad of state mandates around testing, teacher evaluations, the third grade reading guarantee, and the like. But despite all of these pressures, we have teachers like Ronald Bolgery, our Akron Public School Teacher of the Year, who teaches in the automotive department at Ellet High School, and Eric Matthews, a marketing teacher at North High School, who was named the 2015 Association for Career Technical Education, the National New Teacher of the Year. And I think you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Now every day, these teachers and many more give all they have to our children, preparing them for the future. And speaking of dedication, let's not forget the numerous organizations and community volunteers who are working in collaboration with our schools to improve the lives of our students. This year, we have expanded the number of partnerships with individual schools. For example, the Love Akron Network, Summit Education Initiative, and the Hudson United Church of Christ continue their work in supporting our students and Principal Sherry Bennington at Finley CLC. 
St. Hilary Parish and Seeds of Change are providing tutors for students at our Helen Arnold Community Learning Center, as well as providing those students with enrichment. And a group of local ministers, including our own Reverend Dr. Curtis T. Walker Sr., Bishop Joey Johnson, Bishop Samuel Hampton, Bishop William Smith, Pastors Clifton Norwood, Dennis Butts, Diana Swoop, Jeffrey Dennis, Melford Elliott, Donald Nelson, Eugene Norris, David Parker, and more, many more. Joining them are Councilwoman Tamala Lee, folks from the City of Akron and Summit Education Initiative to support our children on the road to success. And we have joined them in applying for the State of Ohio Community Connectors Grant to provide funding for much needed one-to-one -one mentoring for our students. I'd like to thank Jonathan Greer of Man Up and our own Andrew Sicardi from our Student Services Department for assisting us in this effort. Now along these same lines, to me it's very disheartening when I hear stories in, with some of our students you know, for instance, unsportsmanlike conduct from our athletes. It's a poor reflection on Akron Public Schools. And our athletic program should be a vehicle to promote post-secondary opportunity and success. Now, although mentoring will help, I believe it's time to really evaluate our entire district athletic program. First and foremost, it is about our kids. And it has come to my attention that we may have not kept up with the careful monitoring of the Ohio High School Athletic Association rules and the training of our coaches, which is not acceptable. As we look to hire a new district athletic director, I wanna make sure that we're providing that person as much support uh, as we can. Now, I have spoken with former Cleveland Browns player Tom Cousineau about forming a superintendent's advi athletic advisory council. The primary goal of this council will be to advise myself, the superintendent of course, to make and make recommendations to inform the planning and decision making regarding the overall co-curricular athletic programming that Akron Public Schools offer. The co-curricular athletics, they're an extension of our school day and the classroom. Through lessons that are taught in our gyms, on the courts and fields of play, our students grow into young adults through this practice and competition that really needs to be guided by skilled and thoughtful coaches. A quality co-curricular program is uh, carefully planned, it's continuously evaluated and improving. It's well equipped, safe, and led by well-trained professionals who share a common vision, purpose, and mission. So I am looking forward to working with uh, Tom Cousineau with the support of Summit Education Initiative to make our athletic program exemplary. And I think they should get a round of applause. And speaking of professional athletes, what a special year it's been for one of our premier partners, uh, LeBron James and the LeBron James Family Foundation. This summer, our Wheels for Education kids were there in person at Infocision Stadium to welcome LeBron home. Um, and our Wheels for Education just keeps on turning and turning. Whether it's having lunch with Dr. Scott Scarborough, president of the University of Akron, or touring uh, Harry London Chocolates, I miss that one. Um, or meeting internationally renowned pianist Long Long, who visited Miller South uh, prior to his, uh, con his uh, concert at Severance Hall in Cleveland, our Wheels for Education students have seen a whirlwind of activities this year. But the highlight had to be seeing the face of little Mariah Riley and her family during the unveiling of her family's home uh, makeover completed by Nicole Curtis of HGTV's Rehab Attic. And actually, you should have saw my face when I actually met Nicole. So <laughs> my wife was there too, so I behaved. <laughs> Um, with a little help from LeBron and probably a few hundred volunteers from across this community, their home on Rhodes Avenue was completely transformed. And Nicole said it was nice to have someone who could fix or paint virtually anything in the house without using a ladder. <laughs> but I'd like to thank LeBron James, Michelle Campbell here from the foundation and her crew there for putting our kids first and really providing them and supporting them through their partnership with our Akron After School Program and the Akron Public Schools. <laughs> Thank you. 
And I really have to say that for as much as we have always appreciate, appreciated LeBron's commitment to our students, it is really nice to have that commitment and his presence back in our community again. So again, thank you. This year, the Akron Metropolitan Housing Authority celebrated the opening of the Reach Opportunity Center in Summit Lake. The mission of the Reach Opportunity Center is to enhance the quality of life for residents in the Summit Lake neighborhood by increasing educational opportunities for both children and adults through the collaboration of many community partners. And I, for one, am very proud that Akron Public Schools is a capital partner in the project by contributing to the construction of two kindergarten classrooms at the Reach Opportunity Center. I'd like to thank Tony O'Leary and Chris Uhas for their leadership, because this is really how we need to approach education today. We know that the needs of our community are not like they were in the past, and our families are not like they were in the past. In the past. So to Tony and Chris, again, thank you. Our overall school population is really changing as we continue to welcome some of the newest members to the Akron community and to our schools. Our non-English language learners totals over 1,400, and these students speak a variety of languages such as Nepali, Spanish, Karen, Burmese, Arabic, and Hmong, just for a few. Uh, for me, this really hit home last year in the middle of our Ebola virus situation that hit our community. But first, I want to say that as a community, we are really fortunate to have the Summit County Public Health Department. Because during the Ebola scare, Gene uh, Nixon, Donna Skoda, and Dr. Margot Ermey, they really did help me in getting the correct information out to our families. And at North High School, you know, in terms of our non-English language learners, we needed interpreters to get that message out to our diverse student body and their families. So again, I'd like to thank uh, the Summit County Department of Public Health for being there with us during that crisis. Now, all of that work is really challenging, especially when we have to pay for it. <laughs> and at this time, I am really pleased, I'd like to introduce our new treasurer, uh, Ryan Pendleton that the board hired earlier this school year. I want you to hear from him about our school finances and how he sees the world, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. So Ryan Pendleton, please come up. I did ask David, I said, are, are you sure you want the finance guy to talk? <laughs> I mean, that, but I, I do want to extend my thanks to David for making me feel welcome. Um, my first six months has been just a wonderful experience of getting to know our board, uh, our community, and our employees. Um, the financial office must reflect the district's commitment to its stated core values, vision, mission, and established goals we must align the budget to where the students and organizations need it the most. This is especially an important time in Ohio school funding. The governor recently released the next biennium budget. This uh, process is lengthy and will most definitely change between now and June. My pledge is to be a part of that conversation in Columbus. And my pledge is that Akron public school students will be represented. As in every department in Akron Public Schools, we strive to serve students better. There's always room for improvement. Here are the following ways that we've furthered that commitment. One, we've started a well-functioning finance committee to evaluate spending, set benchmarks, and keep the community informed. Two, to further enhance that transparent work, we will be launching a webpage dedicated to school finance-related information our budget, monthly financial reports, and special projects as directed by the board. Three, the Akron Public School financial audits are exemplary. The overall process of an audit allows a third party to determine the accuracy and legality 
of our financial transactions and practices. Our fiscal 2014 audit will be uh, completed soon and we'll be issuing a press release. For the past several years, Akron Public Schools has received an unqualified opinion, the highest possible mark. Finally, the Community Learning uh, Center process, the building project, comes with great responsibility and fiscal oversight. Those construction funds follow the same independent audit process on a daily basis reviewed by the board, the superintendent, the treasurer, and with 60, almost 60% of the funding come from, coming from the state of Ohio, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to shape Akron Public Schools for the next generation. Again, I, I am so grateful, I am so proud to be a part of the Akron Public Schools team and I look forward to meeting many of you in the future. Thank you. Well, thanks, Ryan. And speaking of the governor's budget, I would like to add that we are in the process of reviewing his operating budget language in order to understand the full impact of these funding changes and related policy modifications um, and what those will have on our district. I am cautiously optimistic, but I want to ensure that the detailed budget language does not unintentionally pit districts against one another as all districts around the state of Ohio, whether they're urban, suburban, or rural, are working hard to fulfill our commitment to providing an excellent education for all of our students. And what a better way to provide those educational opportunities than building modern facilities. Again, this past year, we opened the King Community Learning Center, and this unique partnership with Mayor Plasquelic and the city of Akron continues to see progress being made, with King opening as our 29th CLC. If you drive by Firestone High School, you'll see that we're making great progress on the Firestone and Litchfield CLCs, slated to open in the fall of 2016. Work has also begun on the site of the future Harris Community Learning Center, which is expected to be open by the fall of 2016 as well. We are currently in the community planning phases for Ellett High School and Case Elementary Schools. And as we look to the future of our projects and our projected enrollment, we really have to make adjustments because of a, a forecasted decline in enrollment. And to that end, we're looking at each of our school clusters and we'll make recommendations to the board and the joint board of review to adjust our facility master plan. So as we continue to move through our school rebuilding program, we will keep a keen eye on making sure that we continue to right size our building footprint to meet our projected student enrollment. Our facilities department under the leadership of Paul Flesher has done an excellent job and Paul, I'd like to thank you. I know you don't wanna be recognized, but you're gonna be recognized anyway. <laughs> now as an urban public school district, our challenges reflect the challenges in our community. However, we must not let that prevent us from doing everything we can for all children. And that means looking at alternate ways of educating our children in an effort to meet these diverse needs. So collaboration and partnership remain at the top of the list on how to accomplish our goals. All of the things that I have outlined for you today are just a sampling of what we do at Akron Public Schools to put our students first on the road to success. This recipe has provided us with successes like Reimer and Ritzman Community Learning Centers being named by the Ohio Department of Education as high progress schools of honor for the 2013-14 school year in reading and math performance. And this is the second year that the Ritzman CLC has received this honor. a graduation rate that is up from the previous year that exceeds similar districts among Ohio's urban districts, or the $12.5 million in scholarships earned by the class of 2014. 
And in closing, yes, I do acknowledge that we have our challenges, but since the days of Mortimer Leggett, the first superintendent of Akron Public Schools, we have been ready and able to meet the challenges of the day. And we will continue to do so, God willing, with your help. Our future and the future of all of our children really depend on it. And before I forget, you know, I want to say something about leadership in our community as well. Because <laughs> I've been reading with keen interest the articles that have appeared in the Beacon Journal about leadership. If I could ask my board members, my senior staff, our union leadership, and our building administrators and department's head, heads to please stand. Principals, department heads, come on, everyone, please stand. Thank you. Now take a look at this diverse and not too old group. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the team that I support each and every day. And this is the team that supports our children. This is my A team. And I'd like all of you in terms of leadership to think about that. So thank you very much. At this point, we'll, uh, I'm sorry. Now the questions, he says. At this point, we'll take questions from the audience. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, hold your hand up and someone will be around to take them from you. Um, start out with um, something here. Much has been reported about the fact that public schools must bear the cost for transporting charter, stu charter students. The cost comes at the expense of public students who um, have to walk farther to school in cold weather like this. What is your solution for this? Okay, now, um, that's a little bit of a misnomer. So first, Ohio Revised Code requires public schools to transport parochial schools, our non-public schools, and charter schools on the same basis that we transport our own students. So in Akron Public Schools, from grades K through 8, we're required by state law to transport students who live more than two miles away from their school. That's what we do. We do that for charters, non-publics, and parochials. Um, some of us have thought it's unfair um, if you're going to say that you're a public school as a charter or what have you, that you should have those costs as well. But until the law changes, we will have to continue to transport those students. And one of the issues that our Ohio 8 group of superintendents and union presidents has on the agenda is to talk to the legislature and the governor's office about modifying the transportation formula so we get the appropriate funding to pay for that transportation because it is very expensive. A typical bus is probably between um, $89,000 and $98,000 a piece, um, you know, depending on which options you select. As a college educator, I'm dismayed by the number of entering freshmen who are woefully unprepared for college level work. What can the Akron Public Schools high school educators do to better prepare students for college work, especially in the areas of math, English, and civics? Well, that's one of the reasons why we partner with people like Para Jones, who's been a great partner at helping us um, have kids, have that exposure of our kids earlier to that post-secondary world. And let's be honest, you know, for all of us, or the majority of us who went through that experience, it wasn't easy. It was like night and day going from a public high school or a high school into college. And believe me, I've had that conversation with my own son uh, this year. <laughs> but I think it is like Jackie Silas Butler from Project Grad will always tell me when she's scolding me for something is they don't know what they don't know. And she is so right. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we're helping our kids develop those skills and have some exposure to that, which is why we are offering those college level courses. And I know I've talked to Dr. Jones about um, giving some compass tests 
um, classes to our kids so they can know what they're going to face. And um, we have a lot of teachers who are really talking about that to our students every day. It's on our radar screen, and we think by offering those classes and working in collaboration with our partners like Stark State, we'll get there. Because, again, when I talk to folks in Akron tomorrow in the Greater Akron Chamber, you know, the success of our community really is about talent development and talent acquisition, and our kids are a big part of that talent pipeline. So it is on our radar, and it is very important. Here's kind of a related question. Do we really need four-year high schools anymore once there's so much more dual enrollment with colleges? So. Absolutely not. I believe that we should go, we, our focus should be on grades K through 10. I think when students get to 11th and 12th grade, they should really be focused on, look, we're doing it at Akron Early College, so it's not impossible. And those are not the cream of the crop kids. They're first generation college. And with our partnership with the University of Akron, I'm telling you, I'll be on the stage shaking the kids' hands on a Wednesday night for high school graduation. Saturday, this year, it'll be Dr. Scott Scarborough shaking their hands at the University of Akron because they've earned an associate's degree. And believe me, if you talk to our principal, Marilyn Bennett, at Akron Early College, she'll tell you this is not an easy process. But the payoff is really big because those students are getting an associate's degree without that debt. That's very important. So I agree. I mean, our schools need to be remodified or modified so that we do have those opportunities to complete some college while kids are still in high school. What bold and unique ways would you like our Akron public schools, community institutions, and the public to work together to address the learning needs of our students so that all groups of students uh, succeed on equal proportions? I really can't answer that one, but all those people who stood up are going to have to answer it because that's, that's a collective, that's collective work. Um, I think a lot of the help has to come to exposure and really having kids see what the real world, you know, it's like, what I see in education, a lot of times are kids who will sit in a classroom and they never really figure out what life is like once you get out. And that's really our, you know, we really have to prepare that. And I agree with the critics who say, you know, that state testing gets in the way and a lot of those requirements. And I didn't have that when I went to school. So it is difficult to understand. But I think it's really one by one getting involved in an individual student's life to help that kid be successful because sometimes they don't have it at home. You know, I'm fortunate. My parents in December this year will be married for 65 years. And Growing up in a stable home is priceless, and many of our kids don't have that. And that's what we as a community are going to have to provide one way or another. Not that we have to bring people into our homes and take care of them, but you know what? We're going to have to sometimes kick them in the seat of the pants and say, you're going to be successful no matter what it takes. And I really think that's the, that is the solution to the issue. In other parts of the United States, it has shown that uh, year-round school is a tremendous asset in education, educating students. Um, what, when will Akron do this? Oh, these are some hard questions. Um, <laughs> I'm going to push it on Pat Shipe, our union president. I'm going to have to work with her to figure that out because there are some, you know, there are some uh, benefits to that. The summer slide that we like to call it where students are miss a lot of academic content and then all of our principals are shaking their heads because I hear from them in the fall you know when I'll go out and visit buildings and, and visit teachers about how far kids have fallen behind. Um, and we do have some excellent summer programs. You know LeBron James Family Foundation helps us with our tech camps. Mary Kelly is the queen of our summer enrichment and then our early fall pre-start uh, programs. But there is something to say about that. And we will have to look at um, how do we transform our schools to year round because like very few people on the real work world, I didn't get summer off, you know, before coming to Akron Public Schools. You worked all year round. So that is something we need to do. 
why doesn't the uh, why don't the Akron Public Schools employ a two-hour delay on days when you might otherwise cancel schools? That's an easy one. Uh, okay, so um, five thousand kids we're transporting, and we're triple tiering them. So if we did a two-hour delay, our elementary kids would probably get to school at eleven thirty or noon and then turn around at what, 2.30 and come home. It's with just the logistics alone of transporting that many kids and getting them to school. You know, we have a new transportation uh, director we hired last night. We're gonna give that problem to him. He's the new guy, so we'll give it to him. But it is difficult. And um, I had talked to Deborah this morning because uh, she and I are the ones who are on the phone at four o'clock in the morning so I can text Mrs. Mansfield so she can let her kids know whether school is open or not. But um, that is something we have to look at because I am getting a little tired of the weather and having to close school because it's so cold. But we do have a majority of our kids who are walkers and in these low wind chills and you know, it, I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm just saying this is reality. I don't care how many old ladies, no offense, who are knitting scarves and hats, we still have kids that don't have the appropriate gear to, to do that and, and make it to school. And it's a shame because in our community, whether it's United Way or whether it's InfoLine, we have a lot of resources to make sure that kids have what they need, but you know, it still doesn't always work. So um, We've thought about it in the past and actually tried it. It was a mess logistically, but we're going to have to look at it again because even I'm getting frustrated with uh, the school closing thing. Just a couple more questions here. Um, what can Akron Public Schools do to alleviate the stress and pressure on teachers and students related to the excessive state and federal testing? A lot of that, again, um, I think, you know, our teachers and administrators have worked together and have come up with, you know, the best plans, but some of these are required, you know, by the state. And those are some things that we know that uh, State Superintendent Dick Ross has talked about limiting the amount of tests and we'll just have to continue, I think, working through whether it's the Ohio School Boards Association or Ohio 8 group and others to really try to get back to where our you know, teachers should really be designing their uh, assessment instruments and using that action research to determine whether a kid is making it or not. That really should rely in the classroom. Um, <clears throat> And, and not lie in the legislature because my frustration is it just keeps changing and they expect us to make these changes on the fly and it is impossible and all it's doing is stressing out all of our teachers and staff. Looking back on, on last fall's Ebola crisis, uh, would you have done anything differently and what is the school system's policy on flu? Um, I would have retired. Is what I would. <laughs> that was a very difficult because it was unknown and there was a lot of irrational fear. You know, in talking with the gentleman from the CDC and Gene Nixon and his staff from the health department, um, you know, there was a lot of information about how Ebola is transmitted. But when we go into a, a school building, as Pat and I uh, discovered, all of the logic goes out of the window and people are just scared and I can understand it. And you know, it came down to if you were a child who lived in the same house with someone who had exposure to Ebola but had no known infection, people were scared of the child who was just in the same home. And we tried to explain and explain and I just got to a point where you know, this kind of fear is going to cause a lot of problems. So we decided to, um, in the couple of schools, close and do cleaning, which really doesn't help. Um, and I had a frank conversation with Dr. Ermy, and she told me, but what you're doing isn't good. I said, I know, but you know what? There are sometimes you have to hold people's hands and make them feel better so it all goes away. I wouldn't really do much different. I think, um, you know, just it's something that was new. We've heard about it. It's been around for a long time, but it had never been here. And um, I, what I learned from that is there's a lot of changes that need to be made, 
I think like at the centers of uh, disease control when we're working with something like this in the general public because we found that I think we were very um, kind of caught off guard about the whole thing. Final question. Um, you talked a lot about your partnership with LeBron James and LeBron James Family Foundation. We want to know, um, once LeBron James brings a championship to Cleveland, are there any plans for you to hire him once he retires, maybe in a coaching <laughs> position or something like that? Uh, no, I, you know, <laughs> I don't, to be honest with you, I really don't know how LeBron does it because, you know, he's going to be in a movie coming up. He has, you know, production of uh, a TV series or cable series. I mean, the guy is really busy, um, not to mention some of the, philanthropic things he's done like in at the during the all-star uh, weekend um, he could be the next superintendent maybe I think people would love that <laughs> but um, no we're just happy that he's here and we're very happy that LeBron is really involved and I think he sets a good example for how many of us you know whether it's your time talent or treasure to really get involved in the schools. And, you know, I give him a lot of credit for that and really do thank him from the bottom of my, my heart for what he's doing for our kids because it is making a difference. Thank you for coming out today and thank you for your speech. Thank you. Thank you.